Hello, my name is Martin Parr. I've been a photographer now for 50 years, and uh, this exhibition gives you a chance to look at uh, my output in that uh, period. So like anyone else in the 1970s, I started my work as a black and white photographer. Back in those days, it was the thing to do. Color was the domain of um, snapshot photography or commercial photography. And within that period, I did many projects such as um, the nonconformists, but also this substantial body of work in Ireland where I lived between 1980 and 1982. And that was in fact the last work that I did in black and white because um, uh, come 83, I discovered the work of uh, the American photographers like uh, Eggleston and Stephen Shaw who were working in color. So it gave me confidence that I could think in terms of color. So I changed to color. I bought a medium format camera and started the work called uh, The Last Resort about a rundown seaside resort called New Brighton. For this work, I'd actually changed format. I'd gone from 35mm black and white up to a 6x7 color uh, medium format camera. And uh, I had a much bigger negative, so the, the quality was much better. And I started to introduce flash regularly into these images. So it gave a particular language, if you like, of uh, almost copied from commercial photography, but I applied it to a documentary situation. And then over the years following that, I pursued the whole idea of color. Uh, and in the 80s, I did a project about the middle classes and started a big project about, um, small, called Small World, which is about tourism throughout the world. So in this 50-year period, my main project has been looking at and examining the leisure pursuits of the wealthy West. And if you like, that's my one big project. Then all these different sections that I've done, from anything from Ireland through to the last resort, through to the cost of living. More recently, uh, things like the establishment or black country stories, they all fit into that sort of category. So I have one project, and then within that project, I have maybe 50, 60 different chapters. And the accumulation of this, which is so well reflected in this show here uh, in Boston, uh, really demonstrates that sort of whole perspective of one big project, but different chapters within that one category. So I have this project called Auto Portraits, which really looks at and celebrates the sort of different ways in which we can have our photo taken in studios. And of course, I started this during the analog days. Uh, and then, of course, 10, 15 years ago, it all changed to digital. So my rendition of myself, which I would get uh, commissioned by different uh, portrait studios, has changed quite dramatically in this period. And in a sense, uh, although it, the constant is it's always photos of me, what you actually see is the development of uh, how photography has changed. So it starts with analog. We have things like black and white pictures, which have been hand colored. And, and then we go into the digital era where anything was possible. You could put together a picture of me, Jesus, Lionel Messi, whatever you want. And uh, you would be able to convince people that it's all one photo. So as well as being an interesting project to see how I've aged, it's also a project to show you how photography has developed in the last 30, 40 years. Together with my friend, Jerry Badger, back in 2004, we did uh, the first two volumes of the history of the photo book. And this is very much to do with the idea of uh, giving a new status of the photo book within photographic history, because as a photographer, I know how important the books are to me. It's how you learn about other photographers. It's also the whole, the vehicle that you want to achieve when you've got a body of work that you think can work. So you want to make that into a book. So because the history of photography is so subjective and previously been written by academics and theoreticians, we felt the photo book hadn't really been given it the due status it deserves. So we, we, we did these books from my collection, which I had built up over a period of 20 years or so. And then we finally added in 2014 uh, another volume, volume three. And I'm very pleased to say that these books still have a certain currency. And when people are looking at the history of the photo book, they often refer back to these, um, these books because Jerry Badger, a brilliant writer, was very eloquent at expressing how important the photo book was to us photographers, if you like. So in one sense, you could argue this is a revisionist history where we've looked at the history of photography via the book rather than via the photographs. Of course, the two overlap. We have the great classics, Robert Frank, Walker Evans, William Klein, all represented in this collection. But it also gave us a chance to look at books from 
uh, countries that have been somewhat marginalized, like uh, Latin America, China, Japan. And uh, it was a very, uh, a very rewarding project to, to undertake. Uh, I'm by nature a, a collector. Uh, so at the moment, I'm now collecting photographs from my British colleagues to go into the Martin Parr Foundation, the purpose of which is to celebrate and to collect and to give a platform to other British documentary photographers. But I think the whole process of being a photographer is a form of collecting. You know, I've been working for 50 years odd as a photographer and I'm collecting images uh, and these images all relate to my relationship to uh, the country that I was born in, particularly England, uh, although I have photographed uh, in America, in China, in Japan, all around the world. But I, I guess my, uh, my work taken in England is probably the most important. And as well as the actual collecting of images to make projects, I've also collected rather strange ephemera like Saddam Hussein watches, uh, space dog ephemera. These are quirky things that I can't really explain, but I just do them anyway. And uh, I've often done displays of these uh, and indeed published catalogues of them. So yes, collecting is at the heart of my um, process and my thinking. And uh, I very much like this attitude of trying to put together a collection that means something beyond the individual items that they contain. So the recently published uh, book about uh, my Irish pictures, which is called uh, From the Pope to a Flat White, refers to initially the first thing I shot uh, was 1979, was the Pope's visit to Ireland in that year. Uh, at that point, I think two thirds of the Irish population came to see the Pope. It was very much a country uh, governed by the Catholic Church. Uh, and then of course, uh, the, the, the influence of the Catholic Church rather waned. And by the time we got to something like um, 2017, when the, the next Pope's visit, only a, about a, a, a tenth of the population came to see the Pope then. And in between that time, because Ireland had very agreeable corporate taxes, many European uh, companies, or many American companies, had set up their European headquarters in Ireland because of the low taxation. And therefore, Dublin in particular became a very gentrified. And I thought uh, a flat white was, if you like, um, if you think about gentrification, it's the one thing you can get in a new sort of trendy area in a coffee bar is a flat white, hence the title of those two things. And in that 40 year period, Ireland had changed quite dramatically from being a very conservative Catholic run country to being a very open ended uh, gay weddings. They even have a gay tea shock. Uh, so it, it's changed quite dramatically beyond recognition. So th this book is really about that journey and about that 40 year period where I've been photographing on and off, and it shows various highlights uh, from that development that Ireland was going through in this very short space of time. So in the final section where you see some work that I did in between the two ends of the Irish work, we, first we see the last resort, which as I've explained is a, a project done in colour for the first time uh, about a rundown seaside resort where I'm comparing uh, or contrasting, if you like, the rundown backdrop with these families still going out, uh, taking their kids for a day out at New Brighton, which is what you did if you lived in Liverpool. So it's the contrast between those two things that I wanted to highlight. And then we move on to the cost of living, uh, which is about the middle classes. Because uh, back in the early 80s, uh, it, or mid 80s, uh, I felt that uh, the middle classes was the one class that was generally overlooked by photographers because photographers are attracted to uh, working class and very wealthy people, but the, sort of the, the stuff in the middle, the class in the middle, uh, which you and I are members of, uh, tended to be overlooked. So I moved to the south of England, uh, to Bristol, which is a very middle class um, city, where I still live in fact, and photographed in and around Bristol and Bath over a period of three years, and produced a book called The Cost of Living, which really was a sort of my rendition of uh, the middle classes and even now, when we look at the pictures, they feel very dated. And I do quite like the sort of notion of um, how photographs date and how we look back and the fashions and the clothes and the, the, the decor that was so uh, important back in those days now feels quite dated. And then we have um, some pictures from the small world. This is an ongoing project of mine where I've been round to look at the, uh, a lot of the very important tourist sites around the world. And here I'm trying to explore the difference between the mythology, 
we all have in our heads a, a, a vision of how a place will look before we go there, if it's a famous place, and then the reality, which is often quite different, uh, because you're having to queue up, you're having to uh, battle to get in to see something, so many other people are doing it at the same time. So in, if you like, it's illustrating the notion of uh, mythology versus reality. Uh, and this, for me, is an ongoing project that I will keep doing probably until I drop dead, because I just like and I'm attracted to the whole business of tourism. We don't know yet in this post-COVID period whether tourism will uh, regain the momentum that it had uh, before 2019, but uh, it's slowly getting back. I think a few years' time, we'll have forgotten about the COVID period and things will be back to normal, being very busy. Places like Venice, Barcelona, completely overrun by tourists, almost destroyed by the very people who come to visit it. So I have some uh, dealers in America, and I've had uh, many shows with these dealers, but this is the first time I've actually had an opportunity to show a much wider uh, selection of the work that I've done, so I'm very excited about that. I'm very excited also that it's, uh, the Irish work is coming to Boston, because Boston has a very big uh, Irish diaspora, and it's a great opportunity. I hope people will come and see it from the Irish community. And so it's, it's a great moment for me to actually have a substantial museum show with all the, uh, the sort of stam stammer and the credit that goes with that. So thank you, McMullen. I'm very grateful to have this opportunity to share my work uh, with a different and new audience.